okay, that, that <laughs> you know that wasn't what that person's intent was. <laughs> They're not trying to say it's a beautiful day. They want people to see their Bentley. And it's like, hello, this is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Faithful Fridays, Divided Devotions, where we look at conflicting apologist claims. What the Bible really says. John 17, the high priestly prayer, where Jesus gives us skeptics the right to believe that he was not sent by the Father. You know, you've seen all these people with these mass kind of, you know, mass slaying in the spirit. And I don't know how you, you know, how, how, how can we explain that where you have, you know, this thing where, you know, Pastor Benny would, you know, do something or blow or something. And you got like 300 people in the front rows just kind of falling out. Like, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So sometime maybe 20 to 25 years ago, I don't remember the exact, the exact time. I was working as an electrician with my uncle and one of our one of the contractors that we work for this developer contractor did really high-end multi multi-million dollar homes in ritz cove in dana point and we had to go do this little uh electrical fix a, a remodel add a plug in a closet for an exercise machine and we're we're in this guy's closet and there's like 30 or 40 of these white coats now, we had been told it was a big religious leader, but not who it was. So I told my mom about it. And she, and a few days later, she said, oh, yeah, I asked about that. And they're like, oh, it's Benny Hinn because he was he was he had moved from or he was in the process of moving from, I think, from Florida or Canada or somewhere. I, I, it doesn't matter. He's he's moving to Orange County like he's doing stuff with CBN and like the studio, you know, filming his show and whatnot. And. And he's bought a lot in in Ritz Cove. So this is by the Ritz Carlton in Dana Point, right on the coast. You know, NBA players and multimillionaires and et cetera live live in these homes. And I, I did the electrical work on on a handful of them way back in the in the day, like late 1990s, I think, the early 2000s. So so Benny Hinn is, and his family have bought a lot, an empty lot, and they're building a brand new house. You know. Just, just like Jesus taught, you should have these mansions, of course, and and so, anyways, I I um I knew a little bit about him from the Bible Answer Man because so the so it's really a weird. So I was caught in this weird thing. If you were Vineyard back in the day, you had you had the Calvary Chapel people, which the Vineyard came out of, saying you guys are too charismatic, you're too weird, uh, you put off new people. And then you had, you know, you had the Bible answer man, Hank Hanegraaff, saying it's counterfeit revival. You guys are all doing crazy shit, you know, barking like dogs. And now I wasn't never bark like a dog, but and I was a little skeptical of this stuff back then. But I knew that people were good people, like at least I thought so. And I and I knew that some of the criticism was exaggerated. And I also knew the Vineyard Movement had a problem with people that were too outlandish. So up in up in. Um, what became called the air, what was called the airport vineyard, but then they got they got basically kicked out of the vineyard movement um, for being too crazy, like they were they like they went off the ranch of craziness. received miraculous gold teeth in their mouths and uh, here in Toronto we've probably had about 300 people so far this was porcelain on this side now how can God turn porcelain into gold my God can do anything so he did and he said yeah it was changing I didn't believe him and then somebody gave me a mirror and it was really there did you see it did you see it yeah it's amazing, isn't it? It's not going away, right? Right. My gosh, they are too. Look at that. I didn't have any. She said, I didn't have any. The top ones are already gold. I mean, this is changing right before our eyes, people. <laughs> what do you think about this, hun? This rules. This rules. So, so my thoughts on Benny Hinn were just they were kind of in the in the middle ground. Now another another little sidebar 
when I was in the Assemblies of God on Maui before I came back to California and got plugged back into the into the vineyard, um, and of course, Assemblies of God is like you know speaking in tongues and and the Holy Spirit. The sign of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is you speak in tongues, which I never did at the Assemblies of God because I was very skeptical about that stuff. Now, I did speak in tongues later, and I can still speak in tongues now, but I won't, I'll spare you that for the moment. We listened to, I want to say it's Benny Hinn's younger brother. Now, it could have been a cousin, but I think it was his younger brother. His His testimony was... When Benny Hinn became a Christian, I mocked him and mocked him and made fun of him, but I ended up being a bad drug addict and partying and you know doing all this bad stuff. And Benny loved me, and eventually I got saved, and now I'm out speaking. And I really did take to that message. Like, he seemed authentic. He seemed like he was saying that his brother really saved him from a life of sin and drugs. So in this interview, it's interesting, this Costy Hinn talking to Alan Parr. So Costy Hinn. Like, I'm not going to play a lot of that because it's you can go check it out yourself if you want. It's not necessary to play it all. But the gist of the story is Costy gets out of the Benny Hinn ministry. He used to work for his uncle Benny. And and I mean, he even refers to it as like the the, the, the Benny, the Benny um, mafia, you know, like the family had this, you know, Benny Hinn's worth multiple tens of millions of dollars. Anyone outside of this, even Christians outside of it, realize it's a complete scam. So that's that's Costi's story here with Alan Parr. But the irony to me is that they're also in, in the greatest con, right? They're completely in the con. They're both con artists. They just think Benny Hinn's the con artist, and they're not the con artist because there's certain things that, you know, thankfully they don't do. So, like, you're less of a con artist, but you're still you're still slinging garbage. And then the next thing I want to ask before I get into that so I don't forget is how do you, well, I guess I should wait until we get here, but I'll, I'll just throw it out there. How is it possible for so many people that are involved behind the scenes like yourself that see all these things happening that know, they know, they're not, they're, they're, these aren't, these aren't, dumb people. These are intelligent people. They see the corruption. Alan, Alan, Alan. The irony here is insane. It's in, it's, how could they not know they're intelligent people? Turn that same question around and ask yourself, look in the mirror, Alan, and ask yourself, how can someone as intelligent as I am fall and be hoodwinked for Christianity? Come on, Alan, let's be honest here. Christianity perpetuated slavery until the 19th century. So a black American Christian is just beyond, it's just beyond my imagination how you would subjugate yourself to that. How? And how do you recognize that Benny Hinn is a fraud, but you can't recognize that you're a fraud? Because you're just as much, actually, you're probably a worse fraud than Benny Hinn because you know not to go to that extreme because it keeps more people entrapped. So you actually cause more damage. At least most people, like the people that fall for Benny Hinn are going to fall for a Ponzi scheme or something stupid or some cult. It doesn't matter. Benny Hinn is just a, he's just a symptom of the disease. So, so we take away Benny Hinn, there's going to be somebody else that'll fill in the gap. But with you, you know, you come across as like similar to uh, Sean McDowell and Mike Winger and not so much Frank Turek and, and, in Jay Warner Wallace and Lee Strobel, because those guys come across as completely slimy. Um, but some of you guys come across as being like, you know, like legitimate caring for people and legitimate, legitimately intelligent. Um, you know, I think what what Mike Winger is for the sort of uppity, 
white community, the bros and the surfer guys of the California image, you know, tall, bearded, handsome. I think, Alan, you come across for the black community that's still that's still entrapped in Christianity is that you're you you come across as a nice guy. You're good looking. You know, you got a nice marriage. You know, you seems like you got it together and you're willing to. You're, this is this is the deception here. You're willing to call out the obvious bullshit in Christianity, and that gives you an an appearance of being an honest, you know, like a fair guy because you're willing to call out Benny Hinn. Look, Benny Hinn is so far off the ranch of being a fucking crook and a complete con artist. And if there is a hell, it was made for people like Benny Hinn. So, like, we all agree on that. We all we all agree that Benny Hinn's a fraud. And that he's just, you know, he's a multi, multi millionaire from scamming naive people. Like we all agree on that. So don't pat yourself on the back for calling out Benny Hinn. That's just obvious. What you need to do, Alan, is look at yourself in the mirror and say, how can I perpetuate Christianity on the black community? Because it's disgusting. It is really disgusting. If you believe and I don't even know how you could believe this, but if you believe the Abrahamic God is true, like go look at Islam or, or, you know, the Mormons. And if you figure out that's all bullshit, then look at, look at, um, uh, look at Luther and Protestantism, Protestantism and realize that's bullshit. And then you got to go back to the, you know, the Greek Orthodox or the Catholic church or the early Christian, you know, follow the way, go to home churches, and you know don't raise tons of money help each other out that you know, that would be like a cool thing like like how they did in acts but you all none of you all oh, oh not all some of you do but most of you all don't don't do that you give your money to your big buildings and your you know you worship a god who says i'm not you know i don't you can't find me in a building built by human hands yet you build these big cathedrals and shit you spend all kinds of money on production and music and it's all a con, Alan. You're a con artist just like Benny Hinn. And I am I appreciate that Costi got out of the extreme business of stealing from people and being an extreme hypocrite and a con artist to a nice con artist. Like, I appreciate that. He's doing less damage. But he's still doing a lot of damage. You guys, just take yourself out of it for a minute. Read some stuff by skeptics who figured it out, who used to be Christians. There's plenty out there. And and then come to the realization that it's all bullshit. And then you can then you can live an authentic life. And then you can actually help people where they need to be helped. Because they need to be helped in ways that are real, not fake. Now, all the so when Benny Hinn is doing this slay in the spirit. Who are the people that are all falling down? It's they're desperate people, naive people, people that are lonely and hurt and broken, and they just they want to be loved, they want to be accepted, and they they need stuff. Well, those people can be helped, Alan, if you're willing to do the work. And the work starts with reality, accepting reality, accept the way the world really is. There ain't no God coming to save you. None of the the Benny Hinn ridiculous stuff is just as silly as you when you pray for anything. You're praying to yourself, essentially. Come on. you got. If you're a Christian and you don't recognize this, ask yourself why. Why don't you rec- – how do you recognize that these flamboyant con artists like Benny Hinn are fake, but you somehow think – Alan Parr isn't fake and isn't slinging the same bullshit because the message is the same. And that's the point of these Faithful Friday Divided Division series. Just to point out the obvious. Benny, If Benny Hinn was here with these two guys who are criticizing, now later he's going to say, I don't know if I'm going to include this or not. It doesn't. No, I, I don't think I included this part. But um, Costi t- talks about how he's separated from his uncle and him and Benny Hinn don't talk. Benny won't and he won't forgive him and won't talk to him, uh, you know, because he exposed family secrets, which is they're a bunch of con artists, right? So if, 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 but if, if Benny Hinn was, would actually sit down with you, what would he say? Benny Hinn would say, I love Jesus as much as you, and I'm doing what I feel is right, and God has blessed my ministry, and oh, you don't know all the stories. There's thousands of stories of drug addicts and prostitutes and 
people with sicknesses and cancer that have been healed in my ministry because God uses me. And I know it. And all these millions of people through the world know it. And they're like, yes, yes, that's what I'm going to do. And it's more dramatic and build up. I've seen that happen too. And then another one is, you know, some people just, I think, are experiencing some level of, of darkness. I Okay, what he means by some level of darkness here is that the people have some problem. Addiction, or they're lonely and depressed, or they have a disease, they're going through financial troubles, blah, 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 blah. So it's real. it's really easy to take advantage of people in that situation because they're desperate, they want to have hope, and so people like Benny Hinn come along and promise them stuff. Of course, they, Benny Hinn wants money. You got to give to get. Come on. So, again, this guy, this guy, Costi, I appreciate that, he, that he's out here. Now, just as a sidebar, you know, this video, I think, is a couple, I think this video is a couple years old. So, who knows if Costi and Benny have reunited or whatever I, I i don't know i don't really care at the end of the day my point here is that these divisions prove christianity is just a complete scam that's what it proves jesus prayed to god that the church would be unified in the high priestly prayer and god didn't answer that prayer obviously here you have a guy who was going out and and he's essentially snitching on his uncle. I have to say, Alan, in order to be fair and not broad brush everything is demonic, but say there's got to be an element when a man stands up who's preaching a false gospel and says, fire on you, and people topple. I mean, this happens in cults as well. You can watch footage of, you know, kundalini cults and different aspects of Hinduism. There is something that we have to categorize as dark and demonic. Does that mean everyone's demon-possessed and my uncle's demon-possessed? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there is an element of darkness. So we want to be discerning. That's why we do episodes like this. So people can categorize. Are you dealing with somebody who's just going, I want to fall, I need to be touched? Hey, you know, the Catholic Church is always open. Just saying. Come on, dude. You start talking about demons and demon possession. Like, oh, I don't know if my uncle's demon possessed or if he's if he's casting demons on people, but you know, it's obvious. Come come on. Come on. Really? It's 2024. You're still gonna talk about demons. Really? That and then you say, well, the stuff my, my stuff my uncle has been doing is like a cult. It's just like them snake handlers down in the south or them Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. Come on. It's all the same shit. That's what you're not getting. It's all the same. It's all the same lies. If there was, if there was one true Christianity, then we would be able to see, I would think, if God actually cared about us and he wanted to see the truth, if a loving father wanted his church, the sheep, to know the truth, it would be real obvious. Just make the true church that's actually following the the one that's the, you know victorious over death and disease and blah blah blah. Which which is you know like you guys, you guys are quick to criticize the prosperity gospel because it's obviously bullshit and those pastors are con artists. Like we get that, but. What if, you know, what if there was a, t a, a, st a st fuck, a st statistic? What if there was a, st uh, S's are really freaking hard. C she sells seashells by the seashore. Statistics. That showed that one particular denomination had less depression, you know, less teen pregnancy and drug abuse, uh, less broken homes, less divorce. Uh, more people that were happy, happily working at things that they enjoyed and they, you know, that, and uh, like they were, it, it was, it would be so obvious that that group of people was, was living the life. Like, there you go. Everybody would flock to that church. Instead, what you see is desperate, poor people 
who are naive and uneducated flock to these outlandish ministries and give money they can't afford to give. That's what you see. It's really sad, actually. And again, I'm glad Costi, at least back in a couple years ago, was out exposing his family's wickedness. But I'd say he needs to do more. So if, if you're Costi and you're listening to me or you're like him, you need to do more. And the more is do some actual investigation, engage your brain, put emotion aside, and get out of the con. Just get out of it completely. You, you know... When you talk about being, you're like, you're like a, you're like a heroin addict who's gone to cocaine. That's good. You're not doing heroin anymore, and I'm glad you're not doing meth. But if you're a coke addict, you're still poisoning yourself. Same, the analogy works. Just think it through. Engage your brain. Yeah, just like you know, how can people? Oh, yes. Who yes. call themselves Christians? Yeah. They see all this corruption. They see it's fake and phony, but they just they just turn a blind eye to yeah. it and just lead this double life. Let's categorize again. First, you said it. Pay the pay is great in this world. Um, there were some weekends where, you know, my dad would clear thirty, forty, fifty k um, on a weekend just for a couple services. Uh, you know that on a trip. Um, there's time you just, you make a lot of money fast. There's times where the offerings in, so there's the crusades, but then you stay and you preach a few days for some of the local pastors, and then they do the love offering for you and you take your own offering. There were times where we cleared six figures in the follow-up offerings at different places, not honorarium, not, Hey, I'll come speak. And this is what they charge and all that. I know there's some guys in that world who were like, yeah, it's 50 K for me to speak. But we take our own offerings, and sometimes people would give six figures. We'd go home with that. That's just cash money. So money makes you go, yeah, I know stuff is kind of shady, but we're killing it. And God's still in it. So you justify. Okay, that last clip is so disgusting, I don't even need to comment. Other than to say this, this one thing. If you're a thief, it doesn't matter if you steal a million dollars or ten dollars. You're still a fucking thief. So Costi... You're still a fucking thief, even though you're not taking six figures a weekend and going into clubs and doing coke off strippers and all the stuff you used to do when you were partying with your crew, with your Uncle Benny, and you guys were all big crooks. You're still a crook. You're just stealing less money and you have more respectability. You're still a liar. You're still a crook. You're still conning people and you're still hurting people and you're still robbing from people. And that goes for you too, Alan. You guys are robbing from people's lives by selling lies, selling bullshit. If you actually care about yourself and people and your family, all you have to do is say a few things to yourself. I want to know the truth no matter where it leads. I'm willing to investigate unbiasedly no matter where it leads. And then spend, whether it takes you a month or two or six months or a year or even five years, investigate Learn, learn how to actually study the Bible, what the Hebrew and the Greek said. Read the critics. Read the people that spent the, the 10 years going to get master's degrees and PhDs in Greek and Hebrew and ancient history and New Testament studies that, that got out of the cult because it's all a cult. And at the end of the day, you can do one of two things. You could become a Jew. Like if you really, really, really believe that God exists, and that he d demands some kind of obedience, to some sort of rules. Become a Jew. I, I, there's not much I can argue with you if you become a Jew. Or become like an agnostic atheist type where you, you know, you can believe in God, but just admit that the Christian church is a fraud. Because it's obvious that everything you're saying about Benny Hinn applies to you guys and every other church. It's all fraud. All of it. And you're stealing from people, not just money, but time and their lives and the human potential. I just did a short video today. And the guy had a great, co a great quote. It was about how Christianity steals human potential. So that's what you're doing. That's what you're stealing. It may not be millions of dollars, but it's still valuable stuff that you're stealing. Stop. 
stop stealing, stop lying. And so I hope that helps people. We want to be careful broad brushing, but at the same time, there are some some deeper, darker, heavier categories. Yeah. Well, I don't mind broad brushing. It's all a con and it's all based on lies. And it's all a cult out of Judaism. Paul started a cult. And that's why there's all these divisions and all these arguments, all these things, some of which you even yourself call a cult. So so I will paint it with a broad brush. Now that said, I agree with him that some is worse. Like some of the stuff that happens to altar boys is much worse than losing money. So I agree that there is degrees of harm. And if you if you say to me, hey, I go to a home church. We don't have a building. We don't have a building fund. We don't have a paid pastor. We take turns teaching. We do Bible studies together. And in some of our free time, we feed the poor. We help people. We help people move. Our, you know, if there's widows in our congregation, we make we check up on them. We mow their lawn. That's great. That kind of Christianity doesn't bother anybody. But once you go to this next level where you're building giant edifices to yourself and have and paying, you know, rock star musician Christians to put on a big production so you can get 10,000 people in the pews and amass millions of dollars, come on. Then it's harming people, and, you know, that, and then it gets to that extreme thing where it's worse and worse and worse. So both things are true. There's a broad brush. It's all bullshit. There's also specific things that are more harmful than others. Uh, You don't get an argument from me on that one. In any case, this interview, like I I watched, I think I watched the whole or listened to the whole interview and it's super fascinating. But but the the thing that's most fascinating to me is that these two, these two guys, Alan and Costi, they like, don't get it. Like they're, they're, they're painting. The guy they that's obviously a fraud with the brush, but they don't realize it's the same brush they're painted with. They're both they're both out there. Their job is to lie to people, give people false hope, miss steal from people their lives. They're, they're stealing people's lives. Christianity steals people's lives. This is Michael Beverly. This has been another Faithful Fridays Divided Devotions where. I make the case that if you just read Jesus' own words in the high priestly prayer, you'll know he wasn't sent by God. He wasn't sent by the Father. By his own admission, he prayed for the church to not be divided. He said, Father, make them one like you and I are one so that the world will know that you sent me. And that didn't happen. The church is anything but unified. It's totally divided. So we can conclude that Jesus was not sent by the Father. So get out. If you're in Christianity, get out. Get out. I've been cynical, oh so cynical. Never thought somebody could save me. From another fall, from another scar. But I'm all healed up, standing steady. I couldn't see colors, it was